you could take a grenade, toss it over your shoulder, it explodes node number one, and I go, watch this. The system's going to actually come down and go, we need to reset. There seems to be a little problem. But as it comes up and node one is unavailable, Teradata recreates all of the amps there over in node two, which is in the same clique. So when we talk about migrating like birds, it's a little bit more like the system resets for just a quick second, and then things are told at startup, you guys now live here temporarily until told otherwise. Here's another configuration for your clique. Here we have our eight nodes again, and I want you to notice the two red amps, those are clustered together for fallback purposes. Now, we've got four nodes in the first clique, four nodes in the second clique. Why might we do this? Well, if we lose node number one, resets, and when things come up, a couple of the amps go to the next node, a couple go to the third, a couple go to the fourth, and now there's not as much stress on one node. You see, those amps will migrate to the other nodes in the clique. Now, we could actually lose another node, and those would migrate, and another node, and those would migrate. We go, whoo, this kind of hurt. Now, I want to take this even further in terms of your fallback in their clusters, the buddies watching each other's back. We show signs of, oh, AMP 1 and AMP 2 fall back protecting each other. They're holding each other's data. We told you physically we like to separate them because you'll never see two amps in the same cluster watching each other's back in the same node or the same clique. Node one's having a bad day because we've lost it again, but this is a four node clique. So as you can see, a couple of the amps are migrating to each one of these nodes in the clique. That's the beauty of this. There's a lot less degradation and stress on the other nodes because they're not taking the entire family. Now think about it this way. You've got four neighbors. You put tunnels to each one's house. When your house burns down, you send a couple of kids to neighbor one, a couple to neighbor two, and you and the wife go to neighbor three. If you've got the dime, they got the time. As you can see here, Teradata is more than happy to put a spare node out there. It's going to cost some pretty decent money. It just kind of sits there looking pretty. It doesn't do anything unless you lose one of the nodes in the clique, and then they go, ooh, that empty house ready for me, and they migrate over there, and then, of course, the system's still at full strength. Node one's down again. Node one, what the heck's going on back there? But we've got a spare node, and as you can see, all of the amps that are in node one have left the building, and they've migrated to the spare node, and that's what it's for. When they get node one fixed and ready to go, that's now the new spare node. Very clever in how that works. You know, you say, I paid a lot of money for that spare node. It didn't really do much for me. I don't know if I want to put that cash out, but let me tell you what. On average, when a Teradata system actually goes down and people can't query it, it costs a company about a million dollars an hour. So sometimes it's worth having this ready to go. If this data is important, if your business relies on it, you get yourself those spare nodes and you can rely that this system's probably going to be up 99.99% of the time. This lesson brought to you by Coughing Data Warehousing. If you have questions, we have answers. Check out coughingdw.com for some great offers on our training books. Unleash the genius within.